Hello, welcome to your academy. At your academy today, in this lecture, we will deal with a room of one's own by Virginia Woolf. Uh, at your academy, we have been dealing with this work, a room of uh, one's own, from uh, from two lectures. We have dealt with Virginia Woolf. We dealt with uh, introduction to a room of one's own. You can refer to those lectures through the card uh, where you know the link that appears. On the video, you can click on this link and watch that lecture in case you have missed it. Uh, so we have already had two lectures on this. One was about Virginia Woolf, and the other was introduction to a room of one's own. And in this particular lecture, we will deal with the content of this book, or an extended essay, what we call it, a room of one's own, or you know, it would be a detailed analysis of this book, a room of one's own. So. What is this book about? What are the issues that Virginia Woolf talks about in this essay? Our book, these would be some of the concerns of today's lecture. So, uh, let's begin the discussion with the title of this book. That is, A Room of One's Own. How did this title come up? Or uh, why did Virginia Woolf write the title? A room of one's own. You know, this title, A Room of one, One's Own, was there in the mind of Virginia Woolf uh, when she uh, was, you know, thinking of rebuting or uh, refuting rather the claims of Arnold Bennett's book, Our Woman. If you don't know about Arnold Bennett, if you don't know about claims of Arnold Bennett, you can just click on this link that appears on the video, top of the video, and Watch the lecture on introduction to uh, A Room of One's Own, where we have discussed that why did Virginia Woolf write this essay, A Room of One's Own. So, this particular word or this particular phrase was in her mind for quite some time, and you know, she also had during her lecture at Britain, uh, at Britain College, said uh, that a uh, woman, as she said, and I quote, that I blindly told uh, them to drink wine and uh, have a room of their own. So, uh, she was actually propagating through during her life that if females have the right, they need a room of their own with financial security. So, she makes the title of this particular book uh, from that idea or thought of hers a room of one's own. Now, this a room of one's own, though is like a manifesto of uh, feminism or uh, female writing, but it's written in a fictional form. form. It's, it's a kind of a narrative. So, there are also narrators in, in this particular book. I don't know what I should call it, you know, an extended essay, a narrative, a book. But there are narrators in this book. And the narrators are four Marys. This is how we refer to them. Their Mary is a dominant uh, narrator. And Virginia Woolf says that uh, uh, this narrator is not that important. You know, she says you can call her Mary uh, Britain, Mary Britain, Mary Seaton, Mary Beaton, or Mary uh, Ma Mary Carme Kyle. You can call her by whatever name you wish because this is not important. And that statement of undermining the, the narrator is also important because female was undermined then. But there is a context to this word called Mary or Mary Beaton or Mary Seaton, who are two prominent narrators of this book. And the story uh, behind this is that Mary Beaton and Mary Seaton were two attendants of, you know, uh, Queen of Scotland, Mary. So, these two personalities either could have been picked from there or there is another story related to Mary, uh, you know, in the ballads of Scotland or in the Scottish ballads where it is believed that there used to be a lady named Mary who was uh, who became pregnant uh, by a king and later she gave birth to an illegitimate child and eventually she was executed and in in one part of the story she is outside the palace waiting to be executed so that mary in that tale was considered outsider because she had born an illegitimate child and even in this particular book that we will deal with today the narrator would be an outsider because she would be doing something which the females of his times are not used to do. For example, she would write novels. For example, she would write critical things. She is into writing, into education, which is an alien thing for our society. 
so she is a kind of outsider so that is one of the reasons why she chooses narrator as man now uh, coming to the content of this book what virginia woolf talks about in this book you should create a fictional world now we have oxford university or we have cambridge university in england which are very famous she makes a fictional university and calls it oxbridge university and you know she says that one evening one fine evening i went into the library of this fictional university and i tried to find there you know uh, books about or by women and she said strangely i couldn't find any book of women though i found a lot of books in the library which were about women but they were written by men and there was no book which was written by women about men there was no book which was written by women about men so this particular story narrates the scarcity of literature both about women scarcity of literature i mean good literature about women good writings about women Are writings by women about women? He could not find any. So one of the things that she finds queer about in English literature are about literature are about female in male dominant society was that there were not enough writings of women. Neither were there enough writings of women about men. Though there was no scarcity about writings of writings about women by men now in this library she starts looking for women in history you know what is the place of women in history or how historians wrote about women about female and she says that even in the history books there were no records of female how they lived their lives what they did what kind of a life did they live these questions were unanswered there were some some you know uh, issues that were dealt by historians about women and they would be like a, a woman would be married at an early age she would be betrothed uh, to someone in her infancy and then she would be married at 8 9 11 and then she would give birth to chil- children when she is 14 15 and eventually you know she would become the property of husband her husband would beat her she would have no rights these were some of the topics which were discussed in the books of history scarcely again by men but no significant contribution was there about women in the books of history also then in the same library when she is looking at you know the writings of women the writings about women and the women in history she takes a look about women in fiction and here you know she makes an elaborate you know explanation of this particular thing woman in fiction and she says the most strange thing that she can see about women in men dominant society is that woman is the queen of fiction you know in fiction she is treated as fairy as most beautiful creature as most important creature as a heroic figure as a creative figure as an intellectual figure and what not you know n number of adjectives would be associated with women but in fiction you know she would be made heroic she would be made fairy she would be made innocent she would be made adorable she would be made beautiful she would be made anything but in fiction and she she says that woman is the soul of fiction she is the life of fiction fiction without woman is nothing and that fiction in which woman has the greatest place is not written by woman but is written by men so men who have produced great literature over the ages have had female as the central character and they have believed this thing that if we praise woman if we write good about women in fiction we would perhaps become famous lyrics became famous odes became famous you know in urdu literature ghazal became very famous you know which is a genre where you talk about women you talk about the beauty of women 
and he says in fiction women are treated as men but when it comes to real life it's absolutely opposite in real life females are given absolutely no rights they are not fairies they are not innocent they are not heroic they are not creative they are not great great they are not adorable they are not intellectual in real life it's absolutely opposite regarding this thing woman in fiction i would like to quote a uh, slightly longer passage you know from uh, the book a room of one song which is very interesting and i want you people to know about this quote how virginia wolf thought woman has been portrayed in fiction differently and in real life differently she says women have burned like beacons in all the works of all the poets from the beginning of time indeed if women had no existence save in the fiction written by men one would imagine her a person of the utmost importance very various heroic and mean splendid and sordid beautiful and hideous in the extreme as great as a man some would say great but this woman in fiction this is woman in fiction in fact as professor trivelen points out she was locked up beaten and flung about the room a very queer composite being this woman imaginatively she is one of the highest importance practically she is completely insignificant she pervades po poetry from cover to cover she is all but absent from history she dominates the lives of the kings and conquerors in fiction in fact she was the slave of any boy whose parents forced a ring upon her some of the most inspired words and profound thoughts in literature fall from her lips in real life she could hardly read scarcely spell and was a prophet that's the irony of the life of female in men in, in male dominant society in patriarchal society she has two different worlds two different identities and both the identities have been created by men when he writes about her in fiction in poetry she is the best creator most significant most important most adorable scholarly you name anything any adjective but when it comes to real life she cannot read she cannot spell you know she cannot breathe in fact she is flung she is beaten and all the crimes are committed against her that was about woman in fiction 